Welcome to this next episode of YouTube where we take a look back at the pup memories that we've had in honor of our new pups coming. Uh, we started here in Wolf Care with the 1989 litter who was here just temporarily as the center was first getting started. Not a lot of photos of those wolves but certainly a strong memory for me. And then we went to the 1993 litter of Mackenzie, Lucas, Kiana, and Lakota, who have many, many memories uh, for visitors to the center and were on exhibit until the year 2000 when they were retired. And we certainly have many enjoyable memories of those four litter mates. And as you can see, puppies do grow quickly and so as we plan for the 2012 puppies we look back at where we've been and what we've learned and throughout the years we've learned a lot and this is actually Shadow and Shadow and Malik joined us in the year 2000 and are still currently uh, an active member of our educational programs in the retired pack. These are Arctic subspecies that are born dark in coloration and then lighten up as they get older. This clip is the first day that Shadow Malik met their future pack mates at the side of the fence. We have now since learned that this is a bit old for them to meet the adult wolves through the fence. You can actually see a little bit of kind of fear and a little aggression from Shadow and Malik. So at six weeks, they were already a little bit too old to, to uh, get some of that real strong social interaction at the gate. So since then, every pup introduction we do now um, has the pups interacting at a much younger age through the fence. We also did learn that it was best to let the wolves play around in the auditorium before we started programming, made for a much calmer interaction as the pups did programming. We've had very few illnesses with any of our pups. Malik was the exception. Malik had swallowed a rock and that required some subcutaneous fluids to help him kind of get over that as he passed the rock. And so that was our only real pup illness since the 1989 litter. One of the other things you'll notice here is the moose. Um, this was the year that we bought the stuffed moose for Malik and Shadow, and we use it every pup introduction. It makes for a nice pillow, and you'll see it later on in the clip. But as you can see, Malik recovered and has that canine grin there uh, that we all like to see with well-socialized wolf pups. Uh, when we brought Malik and Shadow in, this was our first real experience with multiple ages, meaning uh, introducing pups to adults. Uh, we hadn't done that before. Everybody else was just single age litters. And you can see here, Mac did an exceptional job of accepting those pups and socially interacting. So that was Shadow and Malik uh, greeting with Mackenzie, who was a dominant female at that time. The other thing that we've learned is that adult wolves really let puppies get away with a lot. And here's Shadow doing a threat display to Lucas, the dominant male, uh, guarding that deer carcass. We also learned that adult wolves really have a playful behavior, and he goes down into a play bow here and tries to encourage or invite chase. And then when Shadow's not watching, he gives him a little bit of four-leg stab to get him going. And again, just a little bit of interesting behavior that we've learned over the years. These adults really are designed to work with pups and um, the social behavior of wolves is very very strong. The dominant wolves also do seem to take a role in guarding the pups and you can see Lucas do a crouch towards Lakota as she tries to approach the pups. And then in 2004 we actually had three pups. Grizzer and Maya who were litter mates and then Nisa joined them about a week later, a week younger, and Grizzer gave us some of the earliest howling. This is at 13 days of age. No prompting from us. He just let out a howl. We did record a lot of early behavioral stimuli from this litter with a ride up, chin rest, tail posturing that's going on between Maya and Grizzer even before they could really be mobile. Nisa did catch up. Uh, she had no problem being a week younger and interacted okay. And here's a clip where you're seeing them greet Shadow Malik for the first time. And again, in those two, um, show the hormonal stimulus, the licking, excessive licking, that's a response to the stimuli of probably prolactin hormone. 
One interesting thing about this litter is that Shadow actually regurgitated for them. That's the only time we recorded that. They grew quickly, and what we did discover in this year of pups is that litter mate compatibility is something that's pretty significant. With Maya and Grizzer being litter mates, they work together, they did a lot of interactions together, and although Nisa was accepted as a pack member, it wasn't nearly as strong as Maya and Grizzer. So we have learned uh, from that and all management from this point on, we will be selecting pure litter mates and, and not doing a integration uh, between litters. So that's the 2004 litter, and the next clip that you're going to see is the 2008 pups, and that was Aiden and Denali who joined the pack, and you're just going to see a clip here of them greeting the fence. You hear a lot of whining behavior, or kind of see a lot of whining behavior. We've turned down the volume a little bit on that, because um, there was some other narration there. <laughs> but basically, the interest is pretty strong amongst all members. Shadow Again, Shadow is posturing a little bit um, as a dominant male. He was very good at guarding and kind of keeping people away from his pack, so he's doing a little posturing in between the people, the staff there, and, and the wolves. But no bit, uh, aggression from the adult wolves, there. and that's the one thing that we've learned in doing these multi-age introductions, is that prolactin hormone is very strong, the nurturing behavior of wolves is very strong, and certainly that intent on socially engaging with those pups is very strong and we saw that again in the 2000 litter with Mac, we saw that in the 2004 litter with Shadow and Malik and we saw that in the 2008 litter for Aiden and Denali. So you can see Denali there on the left giving a little bit of a howl have to be careful to keep their feet out of the fence. The adult wolves in their excitement can grab a pup's foot and and cause it some um, injury, so we try to keep that pretty protected. For 2012, we actually have a better panel system that's already set up for Oscar that's going to reduce any threat or any risk of pups being grabbed through the fence where they could be nose to nose, but they have protective hardware cloth in between. So again, you see the excitement, you see a little bit of dominance of Shadow um, asserting his dominance and some interactions there, and then Shadow's going to let out a howl, and that's more related to the people. Uh, than the pups. <laughs> and here's the old moose again. So again, the moose comes out for the pup years. Uh, gives them something to climb on. It's soft. It's a little palatable. It kind of feels like mom. What was interesting with Aiden and Denali um, is they got a little predatory with it. They got a little head shaking on the antlers and even at an early age they started to show a little bit of that dominance. So the moose is a comfort. The moose is looking a little peaked these days but we certainly are um, going to use it for 2012 pups and use it as long as it lasts. Got a little audio clips that are attached here, just some whining, howling, just to give you kind of a sense of what the pups sound like. And we will try to improve some of the audio recordings and video recordings that we have for pups uh, coming up. And again, we want to remind people that the Pup Care Program participation uh, applications are now online. You can find them on the website under Programs. And uh, you'll need to follow the Educational Program tab and under Wolf Seminars. And again, these programs of caring and socializing with the pups uh, do carry with it a prereq, meaning that we need people to have been in the Planning for Pup program that we offered in 2007 and in 2011 or have been previous nannies with us. We want to make sure that the protocol for socialization is well understood, and that's why we carry a prereq. It is very, very critical that pups have positive interactions with people because what we do when they're pups, will we will live with for the rest of their lives. Lives. So that's it for Wolf Care. And again, have a happy new year and thanks for watching.